Hello everybody, Scott Nelly here again. It's been a couple weeks since we've done a video for you, so we're going to do a little demo today. But first, as always, I like to have a nice little cocktail. Here's what we're trying today. This is the High West Burr Rye. It's a bourbon rye blend. This is from 2019 that I got my, uh, from my friend Trevor in Kentucky. Also going to try the Fathead Brewery Special Operations Hazy India Pale Ale. A hoppy salute to veterans. So everybody knows I'm a bourbon fan. I'm just starting to get the rise a little bit. So a burr rye or a blend of 50% bourbon, 50% rye is a good way to get started on it. You smell that one? Yeah, it's a little good. bit stronger, right? Yeah. Smooth like a bourbon with a little bit of bite from the rye. That's a nice sip. And that is definitely hoppy, a lot of carbonation into it, not overly bitter. I don't get as much citrus on that as I do a lot of um, Hazy India Pale Ales. If anything, maybe a little bit of lemon peel or a little bit of grapefruit. Okay, now I'm ready to get started. Ellie, where are we going to show them how to make today? Meatballs. Okay, you guys saw our meatloaf video already. Similar ingredients, except we're not going to stuff it. We're just going to make the meatballs individually, and then we're going to make some homemade sauce to go with them. So first things first, what do we need? The meat. So we're doing two pounds of ground beef. We're also doing half a pound of bulk Italian sausage, half a pound of bulk ground pork. So we found out that the better fat content, the higher fat content is better for meatballs, especially if you're going to use venison, lamb, or anything like that. You definitely are going to want something... Uh, pork or something of the type to uh, add to the fat content a little bit. So first things first, we have some nice meat there, and then we need some seasoning. So this is just a mix of a little bit of our ground pepper, and then our crazy salt, and our Wildman's Chef seasoning. So just give it a nice little season like that. Obviously, properly seasoned meat makes a dish better. So there is ingredient number one, two, and three. Next off... We're gonna add some chopped onions. There's about a third of a cup of finely diced onions in there. We're gonna go ahead and toss that in. They now, smell good. Now remember, I did not add onion into the stuffed meatloaf because we we're gonna put uh, onion inside of it. This one is gonna go in with the meatballs. The onion kind of smells really good. Yep. Next, we have a little bit of rainbow bell pepper again. Did a third of a cup. So what we're working with is three pounds of total meat, a uh, third of a cup of rainbow bell pepper, third of a cup of onion, both finely diced. Of course, meatballs are Italian. We're gonna add some Parmesan cheese. This is the grated kind as opposed to the powdered kind. It's a little bit nicer texture, a little bit more flavor. We do need a binder, as always. Egg. We're gonna add an egg in there. Kinda of hold everything together. So, we have a nice looking bowl there so far for everybody to start off with. One thing we learned also, have a proper size bowl. I've always used small mixing bowls and made a big mess all over the counter. Yeah, because they're too small. So we start using the oversized bowl, that way we don't make a big mess. Mm -hmm. And so we can mix it. Yeah, but it's easier to mix. Yeah. We're also going to use something here for flavor, and it's also going to be a binding agent. This is a little store-bought basil pesto, something that we like to use uh, in multiple applications. One thing you want to watch out on this, it does have nuts in it. This one has almonds and pine nuts. Most of them have pine nuts. Some of them have cashews. But you really want to be careful that you're not serving this to anyone with a nut allergy because that can definitely set it off because usually pesto has at least one type of nut, if not several. This will also give us some basil, some oregano, some garlic, olive oil. So it'll bind everything together and it'll give it a really nice flavor. That was probably about a third of a jar that we had left over that we used a couple weeks ago. I forget what we used it on. Maybe when we made meat sauce, we mixed it in a little bit. Yeah, I think when we made meat sauce, we put some of it into the meat sauce. Okay, and then one more thing. A lot of people use breadcrumbs. We like to use crackers. This is some leftover stale uh, sesame party crackers. Rich crackers are good saltines. Um, using a little bit over half a sleeve here. I want to grind them up. 
Leave a little bit of chunk in there again for texture. Uh, I just like the crackers better than the breadcrumbs. They're in bigger chunks. They'll add to the texture. And the crackers you can have in a million different flavors. Breadcrumbs you pretty much have two flavors to choose from. Ritz is what mom and grandma always used. I'm, I like using these seeded crackers, onion crackers, sesame seed. I'm just a big fan of sesame seed in my cooking in general. All right. I think we have everything we need in there, right? Yep. Okay. Now we're going to kind of get messy here in a little bit, and we're going to mix it up. So That's going to be both of us this time. We're going to put on some gloves. Gloves. We're going to get this all mixed up here, and then I got a tray to put this on. So it won't make a mess everywhere. It's going to make a mess anyway. Oh, I have no idea how to put these on. Same way you put on any other glove. Okay, I'm going to get this mixed up while Ellie spends the next half hour trying to figure out how to put a glove on. You got it? I see you get the other one. I'm going to mix this up. I want everything to be nice and even. Mix all my seasoning, all my pesto. And I want the cracker crumbs to dis disperse nicely also. I got one good one. Mm -hmm. The pesto smells absolutely incredible in there. It does. I can smell the basil and oregano. I can smell the garlic. Um, I've been using pesto as kind of a cheat in multiple different sauces, seasonings. Um, just really good and we can buy a whole jar for two or three bucks at the store it saves you spend a lot of money on a lot of other things next time we do this we got to put the gloves on you before we even start the video yeah you got that one figured out a little bit faster well the last one you helped so did i just fix it yep you're good sit down so what i'm going to do i don't really check i don't i don't really sit down okay I'm going to get all this mixed up, and then I'm going to start making scoops for Ellie. I just took my little quarter uh, cup scoop that I used to measure yeah, everything. <laughs> Take a step back, Lisa. Use my little quarter cup scoop, and we're going to measure out the meatballs so they become a uniform size. I have a little uh, sheet tray here that I'm going to spray a little bit of nonstick on, and we're going to pop... The meatballs right on. The meatballs gonna cook about 450 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes each side. We want to put a nice brown on them. I'm not gonna cook them all the way well done, so I want some brown, but I still want them a little bit undercooked. And we're gonna add them to sauce later. Yeah. Okay. So there's that. I don't think I put these on right. It'll be okay. Just relax. Well, there we go. I'm gonna spray a little bit of nonstick spray on the pan, and then Ellie can make the balls. Okay, just gonna take my little quarter round scoop. That way we have even uniform size. And Ellie can even them out and just roll them so that they stick together tight and make them tight. Do I just place them anywhere? Yep, place them on the pan in order. Okay, look good. Okay, grab the next one. We'll put that over here. Perfect. So needless to say, we're going to do this several times. I'm going to move this because I almost knocked it off the table. Okay, looking good. Okay, on to the next one. I'm guessing this three pound will probably make about 18 to 20 or so. So we're going to work on this. We'll catch you guys with some pictures on the finished product, and then we'll get her in the oven. Okay. 